I hope that I will have caught my breath by the middle of this uh, fader talk. <laughs> uh, what happened now? Okay, yes. Representation of theme. <laughs> to explain this fader, we better begin by explaining what I mean by theme. Now, a theme, well, it's a core subject, the topic, or, yeah, the, the important question, maybe the tagline of your art, somehow. And uh, it's often exploring certain emotions or some kind of concept or idea, phenomena. Uh, for example, being loyal to your loved ones or how racism operates. And it is not the same thing as a genre or a world. So you can actually explore a theme in any culture or world or genre. For example, being loyal to your loved ones could be explored in a Care Bear setting <coughs> or in a Cold War setting. Uh, now, do LARPs really need themes? I think the answer is both yes and no. Uh, no, because actually people quite often just go for something that they really like. Uh, let's say that you have a castle, for example. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you have a passion for Harry Potter. Uh, and that's quite enough to run a big project. But then uh, the answer is also yes, because even if you just go for it, different themes will emerge. So let's say, for example, that you're playing a LARP uh, that is set in a very elitist student uh, school with different rank systems. and you have this uh, uh, pure blood thing going that comes from Harry Potter fiction world, uh, then your LARP will suddenly become about racism even if you maybe did not intend to. And this is actually what happened at the College of Wizardry, but they removed the pure blood after the first game run because of this. Uh, but if you know where you want to go from the beginning with your theme, then you can design for it to be what is there uh, and get less surprises. You can design stories to support it and you can design actions to support it. Yes. What is a story? Well, it's a whole field of studies, it's called narratology. Uh, and I will now make a very simplistic, simplistic uh, re catch of what has been happening in narratology the last 200 years. Uh, <laughs> so from the beginning, the narratologists tried to uh, catch the essence of a story. What is there to make a story be a story? Well, a story always has to have a hero, for example. But nowadays, they are more busy with what story means in different, uh, yeah, for different people at different times and in different cultures. So then the question, what does story mean to LARPers, is a very relevant question to present-day narratologists. And I think that it mostly, for us, has to do with, with uh, why and how we do different fictional um, narratives in order to facilitate uh, specific actions. So we design certain stories to encourage actions. Now, what is then an action? Well, it is uh, the process of doing something. And I will ask, ask you to, to do an action now. I would like you to, if you have it, pick this up and find this page. Uh, and then you look at the slider on the far right that says representation of themes or representation of theme and you look at the fader min which is action and then you add an s actions uh, because this has nothing at all to do with hollywood action like it being big guns and car chases it's all about uh, yeah whatever action actually and uh, an action does not have to be connected with 
the doer or the reason why you do it per se as soon as you start to speculate in why you took up that paper and put that S on the paper uh, you are already making a narrative uh, and uh, this also shows that stories create actions and actions create stories so they're not mutually exclusive in any sense now most LARPs will be somewhere on the middle of this fader they will have stories to support their themes and actions to support ma minor themes or maybe even uh, yeah, the game rules making sure that all, all players are safe and so on uh, but let's look at the far ends of this slider, this fader as well, uh, where we almost go out of what would normally be considered a LARP. Ah, okay, first I had two examples of mid faders. Uh, so College of Wizardry would maybe be on the upper half, it has quite a strong narrative, but it also has a set of action rules for actions. For example, the magic that some of you have tried, casting spells and so on. Uh, and white death would maybe be on the uh, lower half of the fader um, with a very strong action based system uh, especially when it comes to the characters but there is also a narrative that is connected to the theme of not reaching through in different senses and uh, without this narrative the actions would mean something completely different now, let's look at the far ends of this fader. The fader max would be designing only stories, no actions. And uh, that would almost be like a children's game, actually. Like, uh, now I was the king and uh, go get my uh, raspberries. I need them now. Uh, and then the other player says, no, I don't want to. I'm already making a revolution or something. And then we have to negotiate as we run. Uh, what the rules for opting in or opting out is and uh, how we make magic or you know uh, and uh, yeah I can find one plus with this and it's that if the players are very familiar with your genre they will intuitively know what kind of actions fit uh, so if they have read the same books as you uh, you can play with that with great ease but then if you choose a genre or a world or a culture that is not familiar to your players you might en end up writing too much material for anyone to read to bring them into your world and uh, if you're really at the very fader max then there are no rules to regulate different aspects of human interaction that can be tricky like sexuality violence and so on and uh, this uh, leads uh, that too, that the game design is easy to escalate in a, a direction that you did not wish. Uh, and then the fader minimum would be only action, no story. Um, well, you will try this later, I think. But uh, what is nice with it is that players don't have to enjoy or know character play in order for playing uh, and uh, if you design well the rules for actions will be so clear that the players will never be insecure of what to do some problems is that you might have to renegotiate the conception of LARP if you're working with people who are LARPers they will go like yeah but where is my character uh, <laughs> Or they might even uh, invent a character, which is what happened to me when I run a game called The Losing Game, which was about losing. Uh, and uh, it, yeah, it was only different games that you could only lose. Uh, and the players ended up inventing characters in order to deal with it. Yes, you have a question there? Uh, yes, like some people that I know, they would never ever want to put a hat on their head and pretend to be somewhere, someone else 
but they love interaction. So if you say like, uh, we're gonna play a game, the rules is that you can only jump when I say horse, they are totally up for it. But as soon as you ask them to have a fictional name, they go like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and there is another side to this, and it is that if you uh, want to make a good design, you have to play test. You have to know what these actions produce. And if you have like 50 different tasks involved, then you'll have to play test so much. And this is what I do for a living. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, that's the end? It's the end.